I am a physical therapist and a multiple sclerosis certified specialist. It's always a mouthful to say that. And we talk about topics that relate to physical therapy and exercise and symptom management strategy. So as you may guess, that is a broad topic. And this month it is analyzing your walking. I want to demonstrate for you guys foot drop has lots of different forms. So I separated it into three foot drop is when your foot doesn't lift either. I'm losing my balance here. It's when your foot doesn't lift at all or very little and you just land with your toes. So instead of landing with your heel as you're moving forward, you might land on your toes or a flat foot. And so it might look something like this. You can't really see. I only got two steps in that one. So it's more like toes, toes, or flat foot. Like you can't really pick the leg up. You can't land with your heel. That would be foot drop. Foot slap is when you can land with your heel, but you hear a slap. If you can ever hear yourself walking, it's probably foot slap. So it looks, look and sound something like this. It's this quick slap to the ground. Slap, 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 slap. You'll hear yourself specifically when your toes slap. And then foot drag is when you have such little ankle strength that you can't even lift your ankle up at all and you just drag your foot. Now, some people drag the whole way, other people just drag in the beginning and then you're good or just drag at the end. So there's lots of different variations, but we're gonna review why they happen and what you can do for them. So hopefully that demonstration was helpful. One thing that we'll talk a little bit about at the end, but I'll mention it now because it's fitting, is yes, these exercises are important, but another extremely important piece to improving your walking and analyzing your walking is also practicing walking with good quality. If you're in my Missing Link program, if you're a Missing Link member, you know exactly what I'm talking about. One thing that you must do is implement these things into your day when possible. So if you have time, if you're rushing to the bathroom, that is not the time to practice your good walking or your marching. If you are rushing to work or your um, whatever the situation, if you're rushing, not the time. But if you have time, you've got to spare 30 seconds. You've got to spare two to three minutes. Practice walking with exaggerated marching, exaggerated leg kicks, exaggerated ankle lifting or put it all together and the whole thing is exaggerated. You have to practice implementing what you're strengthening into real life situations. Okay, so let me change. I will say for, for ankle based exercises, I prefer to do them seated because it's just, it takes balance out of the equation, it's easier. And if it's easier, you can do more with good quality. And if you can do more, with good quality, that's more opportunities for neuroplasticity to train our brain. So I'm gonna do these exercises seated. Okay, so what, actually, sorry, let me demonstrate first. So again, like foot drag would be, you're just dragging your foot either the whole way or you lift, but it's just at the end you're dragging or Maybe you are able to lift your leg, but you just land on your toes or the flat part of your foot or foot slap. So it's that, that just heavy slap, 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 slap. Regardless, it's due to weakness in the front and tightness in the back. So one of my favorite exercises is practicing lifting up. And down. You can do one side at a time if you'd like. And down. Make sure it's good quality. You don't want any angling one way or the other. And then just stretch the back. I should have grabbed a cane or something. Your leg goes out straight. You try to get your toes up. That's probably going to be challenging considering you have foot drop, foot slap, or foot drag. So use a cane. Use or a um, 
leg lifters, a dog leash, a bathroom belt, use something to help your ankle stay up. Sit up tall and hinge forward. And you should feel this stretch on the back side of your calf. There's millions of other different positions to do calf stretches in. If you have a different preference, go for it. The moral of the story is you wanna stretch the calf and strengthen the front. However, you that can take a while. As, as we recently reviewed with neuroplasticity, that might take a few months to improve or a year to improve. So if you have foot drop, even though your weakness is in the ankle and your tightness is in the calf, we can utilize your knee and your hip to compensate in a good way. So you're doing those exercises, you're working hard, you're trying to be consistent with them. But in the meantime, it, the more you can bend your knee, the more clearance you're getting from the ground. So you can still have foot drop, but if you can, the more you bend your knee and the more you can march, I'm not lifting my ankle at all right now. It's completely floppy, but that's what I didn't, I didn't foot drag. I didn't foot slap because my knee is bent enough and my hip is marching enough. And then it would still likely land on your toes or flat foot, but it would at least be controlled. So while you are focusing on strengthening your hip, uh, sorry, not your hip, strengthening your ankle, stretching your ankle, you can also be focusing on bending your knee as an exercise. You can focus on marching as an exercise because even though that's not directly related to your ankle, it can compensate, it can help you improve your walking so that your foot slap, foot drag or foot drop doesn't affect you as much, therefore causing safer walking and more confidence. Okay. Um, a lot of people saying they have foot drag. I wrap a towel around my, yeah, towel. Any, so when you're doing the calf stretch, any form of, any form of, of a non-stretchy strap or item will work. You can use a resistance band, but you're not, it's not gonna be the most effective way. So something that's not stretchy. Strengthening the ankle and calf is exactly what I need. Awesome. Uh, I have right leg weakness and stiffness and right foot drop. Is it normal to walk with a cane held on the left hand? So generally speaking, if you have the hand strength and dexterity you want and if you're using a single mobility aid like a single cane a single trekking pole you want that to be on the opposite side of your weaker leg or another way to think of it it should be on your strong side because when you have your weak leg forward your opposite hand should be forward so if you're weaker on your right side your left hand should have the cane so yes that is correct if that's suitable for you. That is textbook correct, but some of my clients, I have them walk that way, but for years they've been walking a different way and it's very uncomfortable for them and they feel unsafe or they don't have the hand strength to hold the cane on that side. Thank you so, so, so much for joining. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.